Hello, and welcome to this talk. My name is Lester Hightower. Today I'm going to talk about a strategy for low-carb meal dosing when regular insulin is inaccessible. So I always like to start these presentations by discussing my connection to type 1 diabetes, which is my son, Andrew. He was diagnosed at the age of five, and he is now 16 years old. This slide shows a little bit of uh, an overview of Andrew's uh, journey with type 1 diabetes. You can see sort of the stages of, of childhood and teenage life that we've walked him through, set on a backdrop of the A1C results that he's had uh, in the last uh, almost 12 years by following uh, the regimen that is presented in the book, Dr. Bernstein's Diabetes Solution. So I'll start by saying that in my family, we were very slow to adopt regular insulin. In fact, it took us almost five full years after Andrew's type 1 diabetes diagnosis. Uh, looking back, it was silly to delay for so long, but we had found a regimen that worked well for us without using regular insulin. And I'm a fairly firm believer in the concept of it's not broken, don't fix it. And so we did that for many years. And this is the backstory. Our slow adoption of R began when our first endocrinologist taught us to mix Levomir and Novolog in the same syringe while we were still in the hospital at diagnosis. That practice goes against FDA prescribing guidelines, which clearly state Levomir must not be mixed or diluted with any other insulin or solution. And I provided the link there to where you can read that. So that being the case, why did our endocrinologist teach us to do exactly that? Well, fortuitously for us, that endocrinologist had participated in this study and was an author of this paper, which was published just three weeks prior to my son's type 1 diabetes diagnosis. And you can see the title there, Mixing Insulin Aspart with Detmir does not affect glucose excursions in children with type 1 diabetes. And you can see the conclusion, uh, insulin detonator mixed with aspart had equivalent effects on blood glucose versus giving them as separate injections in children with type 1 diabetes. Also quoted from that paper, one of the barriers to good glycemic control in children with type 1 diabetes is multiple daily in insulin injections. Mixing rapid actin and slow acting insulins in the same syringe would decrease the number of injections and may improve adherence. Having just completed a study that proved the safety and efficacy of mixing these insulins and desiring to re reduce the shot count burden on my young and newly diagnosed son, our doctor taught us this technique. And so we started from the very beginning mixing Novolog and Levomir twice per day at breakfast and dinner, which were routinely at 7 a.m. and 7 p.m., with the Novolog intended to cover the meal bolus and the Levomir being for basal coverage. I'd like to make a quick but important side note before I move ahead. Uh, not all insulins should be mixed in the same syringe. Most notable is the basal insulin glargon, which is Lantus and all of its biosimilars. Those insulins rely on a rapid change in pH that happens upon injection to cause them to crystallize subcutaneously. Given that method of action, I consider mixing glargon with other insulins as being too risky. I'd also like to share that John Walsh's 2003 book entitled Using Insulin also teaches this technique and it includes a nice chart, it's actually aging now, that shows which insulins are and are not safe to mix together in the same syringe. Uh, that table is presented in that book on page 53. So I was an early and diligent student of Dr. Bernstein's diabetes solution, and I very much understood his recommended regimen, including his recommendation to use regular insulin to cover low carb and high protein meals. But my son's pediatric diabetes clinic would not prescribe Novolin R, and they discouraged its use. 
And again, we started from the beginning by mixing Novolog and Levomir twice per day at breakfast and dinner. And fairly quickly, we saw how differently lunches reacted because there was no Levomir than breakfasts and dinners did. Our initial response to that was to alter lunchtime foods to better accommodate. And so we began providing uh, my son with lunches that were a little higher in carbohydrate and lower in fat. However, my family often eats at restaurants on Sundays after church. And those meals in those restaurants really needed to be very low carb and high protein. And it's solving for those meals which led us to begin mixing Novolog and Levomir for lunchtime boluses. And we were pretty good at it. And so we had a strategy that worked. School lunches used just Novolog and weekend lunches could go either way with low carb and high protein meals getting a mix of Novolog and Levomir, which, you know, in hindsight, we were sort of using that mixture to approximate the action of regular. As Andrew grew and the combined doses of Novolog and Levomir grew, my mind continued to circle back to Dr. Bernstein's advice to use regular. I knew that it was available over the counter at a local Walmart, but I was hesitant. Uh, in February of 2015, we finally took the plunge and Andrew's first dose of Novolin R was at lunchtime on Sunday, February 22nd of 2015. The week prior, I had covered that lunchtime meal with four and a half units of Novolog plus three and a half units of Levomir with fairly good success. On February 22nd, I tried five Novolog plus two R and that was far too much insulin in the short term and not enough in the following hours. The next week, I dosed an even three and a half Novolog, three and a half regular and had a pretty good outcome. Uh, I kept experimenting with that and it took me until August 23rd of 2015 to finally use only regular for that meal. The results were superb and we were finally and fully transitioned. Before I proceed, I would like to say that I recommend using regular insulin, Act Rapid, Novolin R, Human R, etc. if you can obtain it. You know, I would not choose to go back to mixing Novolog and Levomir as a substitute for regular. However, I know that some people struggle to gain access to regular insulin. And so I wanna share this information for those people. But please use regular if you can get it. So now we're gonna talk a little bit about the pharmacodynamics and the pharmacokinetics of insulin. So let's start by defining those terms. So pharmacodynamics is the relationship between a drug's concentration and its effect on the body. Pharmacokinetics is a relationship between a drug's concentration and time. So the pharmacodynamics of a given insulin is fairly stable and, and it can be thought of as constant. That is to say that a chosen dose of a particular insulin can be expected to lower a person's blood sugar by a consistent amount, all other things being equal. The pharmacokinetics of insulin is a little more tricky and it is commonly expressed with graphs similar to the one shown on the slide. These graphs are oversimplifications, but they can be useful and informative as we explore this topic more deeply. So this graph is helpful primarily for the relative comparisons between different types of insulins, not for absolute information about the pharmacokinetics or dynamics of any particular insulin in any certain person. Also note that I intentionally and frequently alter the pharmacokinetics of Novolog in my son. I speed it up by using intramuscular administration. So uh, let's first focus on the action profiles of Aspart and Detonmir, which are Novolog and Levomir. And you can see those represented in the graph. Novolog first by the tallest peak with the quickest action up and down. And then Levomir is insulin Detonmir in the graph. It's a dashed sort of forest green line that you know, slowly ramps up, uh, peaks at about six hours, and then it's shown to slowly fall off to the 24 hour mark. Uh, in my experience, Levomir lasts nowhere near 24 hours. Um, it's more like eight to 12, 
Um, but that's less important, as I mentioned, these graphs aren't really reliable uh, in terms of the, the actual profile of an insulin. They're more useful for comparing multiple insulins. But next, you know, let's envision mixing those two insulins, Novolog and Levomir, in some ratio where the average or the mixture results in uh, pharmacokinetic and pharmacodynamic pro dynamic profile that closely matches the profile of regular, which is shown by the solid purple line in this chart. And that is what I believe that we did with my son for the first five years of his type 1 diabetes journey. And here's some supporting evidence. Uh, this is from a 2012 paper entitled The Alteration of Aspart Insulin Pharmacodynamics When Mixed with Detmere Insulin. So quoted from the paper, Aspart and Detmere insulins were injected either as a separate or single mixed injection in random order. Mixing the two insulins diminished the peak and overall early aspart insulin action and the area under the curve for the glucose infusion rate during the first three hours of the insulin action study. These data demonstrate that mixing aspart with detmir markedly lowers the early pharmacodynamic action of aspart and prolongs its time action profile as compared with separate injections of these analogs. Now the paper goes on to caution against mixing aspart and detonmere because it alters the pharmacodynamics. It says these changes in insulin pharmacodynamics should be weighed against the added convenience of mixing when considering such unlicensed use of these insulins in youth with type 1 diabetes. But that's exactly what we want to do if we're attempting to mimic the pharmacodynamics of regular insulin by mixing these two insulins. So in this experiment, subjects received double the amount of Novolog versus Levomir, so a two to one ratio. The paper's conclusions focused on pharmacodynamic changes of Novolog, and specifically it focused on the fact that that action was markedly lowered during the first three hours. How Novolog pharmacokinetics might also have changed was not discussed, nor was how the action of Levomir might have been changed. I theorized that it was actually sped up some. The paper does have a graph that gives some insight into hours three to five. And you can see, and I highlighted it in yellow on the graph, there's still a lot of insulin action ongoing hours three to five. Unfortunately, there is no data provided past the five hour mark. I suspect that insulin action would have gradually fallen to near zero from hours five to eight, but that is only speculation based on my past experience mixing these insulins. I'd also like to note that when we mixed Novolog and Levomir for Milboluses in my son, our ratios were more often between 1.2 to 1 and 1.5 to 1. So less Novolog, more Levomir on a ratio basis than what was done in this experiment. And that possibly flattened the early hours even further than the 2 to 1 ratio that was used in this experiment. So here are my closing thoughts on this topic. So with my son, we mixed Novolog and Levomir to approximate the action of regular insulin from the ages 5 to just shy of 10. That was from about 40 pounds to 90 pounds. My son is now 16 years old. He's 6 foot 3 inches tall and 200 pounds. We've not used this technique in almost 7 years. And I have no experience with it in the teenage years. My son now requires far larger insulin doses than he did in those earlier years. And I cannot be assured that the pharmacodynamic and pharmacokinetic changes would be similar now to then. However, I am confident in the general safety 
and the consistently repeatable results that can be achieved by mixing Novolog and Levomir as a bolus insulin combination. And so, if you have no access to regular insulin, experimenting with this combination might be worthwhile. And as stated earlier, I strongly discourage mixing Glargon with other in insulins, but I would like to acknowledge that studies have been done that demonstrated its safety and efficacy, and there are links to a couple of examples here at the bottom of the slide. So that is the end of uh, this topic for the day. I hope this talk was helpful, and thank you very much for listening.